Perfect. The password worked. Okay. One cool. second. Yeah, Cupcake wasn't even sure. He's like, oh, try that one. I just have to tell Heavy to shut up. <laughs> Tis the name of the game. Huh? The name? Um. um I'll just look build. build yeah, build works. over Sionia game Yay. one. Password for the. I, what's the password for? Uh, factions one. Thank you. Am I going to be needed all day? Or do we have people to fill in the other two? Um, I am not sure. Um, I could try, like, I could probably get Cupcake or Mike. I think we'll be okay. You can spend some time. Well, Nag... Eh, oh, yeah. I was like, Nagrok's on, and he might want to cast, though, thinking about it. I'm not on live, am I? Uh, yes, you are. <laughs> Damn it, Fork Shop, you need to warn me about these. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Factions. My name is JD, should be on vacation mage here. It is the 23rd of November and is day two of Nyroth's first tournament. I shall be casting for this game. Alongside me will be Mike, I believe, will be casting, right? Uh, sure, sir? yeah. Works for me. And we have the Shimmer <laughs> Forkjaw. Fork Hello. For those that do not know, yesterday was the first day of the tournament where Bilgewater took a 3-0 astounding leap towards victory with Ionian close behind 2-1. and one. Shadow Isles went 1-2 and two, and unfortunately Freljord went 0-3. and three. The team captain, Matzo Kuhn, was locked or tied to a chair in a wind tunnel, but somehow escaped. He is on the loose, and we are putting out an APB for his location. He must stay in the chair. Anyway. Today will be a best of five between Bilgewater and Ionia that's already underway. We're actually ahead of schedule, which we should keep this time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah so fell behind Keeper, schedule and kind of caught up, so it worked out. But today, let's just keep on schedule the whole time. Yes, for those that missed out the games from yesterday, if you check out the Kawhi Suna channel, he's one of the guys that, you'll find the name eventually. <laughs> he has all of the games posted from yesterday on the YouTube channel. You can listen to all the rambling that me and Porkchop are doing during game five. <laughs> it is something I would not show my mother. <laughs> but we are in the champ select now. Bilgewater banning out W and O, probably going for WoW, or maybe some random word that hasn't been spelled yet. One. Probably not, though. Oh. Wow. wow. Congratulations. They have no originality. <laughs> and Ionia spells out D-E-D, -E which does three-letter words spell out dead, in a way. That's nice. So they are declaring some uh, hostility towards Bilgewater. Who would have guessed? <laughs> Though it does make sense that Ionia would have spelled a three-letter word for dead, since they are illiterate. Ah! <laughs> Uh, yes. <laughs> I think Dark is drunk. He's, he's a gangplank man. He just booped me with the really weird boop. Well, duh, because everybody knows whenever they message you, boop comes out of your headset, so, you know, it's on the stream. <laughs> you hear that, Twitch chat? Keep booping her. <laughs> Till doesn't mind. He probably does, actually. Do it. Anyway. Ten seconds later, Porkchop has gone deaf. Hmm. <laughs> Dark Omega <laughs> taking... Oh, you first. Oh, I was about to say probably the same thing where Dark Omega picking up Gangplank, who he is quite infamous on. Indeed he is. Now, he's taking up his sweet time using the entire minute that he's allowed to pick a champion. Either Bilgewater's deciding to let this roll out in case of Ionia falling asleep on them, or just because they want to be mean. <laughs> As Purple has said many times, Bilgewater is a bunch of bullies, and I didn't want to agree with it. Then we played a game against him, and it kind of showed itself. We see Heavy Weapons Guy picking up Diana again. Yesterday he was playing Diana for the last two of three games Bilgewater played, and it was very devastating been friends with Heavy for nearly a month now, and I never knew he played Diana, especially this well. And then we have Raw locking in on Nautilus, his favorite champion from the Bilgewater lineup. And we see Junpei, said it right this time, picking up Varus, which of course is his comfort pick, Sophie Chan on his slash her or it, might be a robot, on Ari, again, comfort picks. Yesterday, Heavy Weapons Guy was able to go in 3v1 and get the triple kill every time on Deanna, so he's going to be very scary for the... Oh, Ooh, wow. Heavy Weapons Guy, guy. Switching, switching to Twisted Fate, ah. that is something nobody expected. 
Heavy Weapons Guy giving a shout out to GG Palace, who unfortunately couldn't make it today. His pet llama decided to just run rampant among the streets of Tokyo and he had to go take <laughs> care of it. Or at least that's the story that I've made up. But yeah, uh, I'm not seeing Heavy on Twisted Fate, so this is going to be a whole different game without that crazy Deanna. Mm -hmm. Uh, he does give the team more global pressure, and you combine that with game planks global pressure. That could be a good way to do some crazy split push stuff. We'll see how they try to factor all that in. And they're hovering over Soraka, which surprises me as... Okay, it's going to Aurelia. It's going to say it would be surprising if they pick Soraka, because God. she... Uh, well, yesterday Sona was played a lot and was seems to be a very good choice for them for their team comp, and I'd be surprised if they didn't return to it. Indeed, though we do see Animorph picking up Diana. Didn't Animorph is actually one of the few people, along with myself, that criticized us even deciding to pick up Diana, that being Bilgewater. But after seeing Heavy's amazing, or he's just troll picking. Anyway, after seeing Heavy's amazing play, we've decided it wasn't such a bad idea. I was going to say, if they did pick up Renekton and Deanna, they're uh, giving Arya two new champions to choose from if they were to do that, both Nasus and Leona. Although, they were just hovering over them, it looks like, yeah. Graves, ADC, they could possibly get Misfortune. But, oh, yep. Ooh. Ooh. Very common due to the fact that Nami's the only support Bilgewater has. <laughs> Unless you count Nautilus. Or Katarina. Which I do. Okay, no, no, Katarina support is not a support, <laughs> it's just a death warrant. <laughs> yeah, but Katarina support, uh, I've seen it in the future matches, it doesn't really do all that well. Katarina's really a mid or sometimes a top laner, not support. She just doesn't have any really support abilities on her. All she does is do damage. And, and Light Fixer again playing as Lee Sin versus Master Yi. Now, Light Fixer is a good summoner in general, so he has nearly the same level of competency with his Ma Lee Sin versus Master Yi. Though, when it's a comfort pick versus comfort pick matchup, just going what you prefer is always better, but it's just my opinion. Um, I'm gonna say I think the lead sins merely to give them some tankiness because you look at Aurelia, their only tanks for their team are Aurelia and Lee Sin. If he had gone with Yi, their only tank would be Aurelia, and she can't tank the whole team. They need Lee Sin with his CC uh, and engage as their tank. That would, I, because otherwise they really won't be able to sustain. They won't have anyone to take the damage in a team fight, and they likely wouldn't win. Win the team fight, that is. Mm hmm. Sorry, I was just responding to a quick message. I hope my keyboard wasn't too loud on the old headset there. But yes, we do still see Mr. Sapling playing Sona as yesterday. And. Hmm, I do not recall Revolutionist, but at least from yesterday, but he must have been here. Revolutionist, anyway. uh. He is their high tier, and I believe yesterday it was Kawe who was uh, their high tier for all three of their games yesterday. So this is a switch up in their roster. Uh, I'm guessing that they don't want the Kawe on a Kawe. They decide they want Revolutionist Aurelia instead. And well, a Kawe is more of the hyper carry, but Aurelia can be a very annoying, impossible to kill champion that could be useful. Very annoying is an understatement. Aurelia is passive, giving her so much tenacity on top of Merc Treads or any sort of other tenacity item. Granted, there's only like three. Maybe two. Not three. Anyway, she is very hard to lock down, and even when you can lock her down, the true damage she's able to deal out will destroy the tanks, which would be locking her down. And if she's able to jump onto anybody, especially the backline, such as Heavy playing TF, Misfortune from Soda, or Nami from Animorph, it would definitely be a quick death. The hope is that Dirk Omega will be able to 
make sure Aurelia doesn't get to that Blade of the Room King Triforce stage of why did we let her get this fed. <laughs> yes. Uh, now, I did have someone tell me that it is possible f- with the new item changes and elixir changes for Aurelia to get close to 90% tenacity. 90%? Yeah, I think they might have like, calculated like an item twice or something, and so I don't think that's accurate. Mm. I think it's more like 70 or something is the correct thing. But in either case, that's still quite a bit of tenacity. She... You know, a stun's just going to be her tripping, basically. Well, quick math here. Isn't Aurelia's passive at three champions? It's 40% on top of the 15% you could possibly get from Masteries. Granted, that's all the way in the full defensive tree. That's 55% right there. Boots would give you about 25, which is 80%, if my math is correct, which it is. And then I don't know about the new elixirs. If it gives anywhere between 15 or 20%, that would nearly be 100 all right, so maybe he was right about the 90. Yeah, I do know one of the ones who does give tenacity, so yeah, they could get up to 90 or 100 tenacity, which would be, you know, CC become useless. That all the Nalus CC, the Nami CC, the TF gold card, all that would become useless against her. Oh, granted, course, don't, oh, granted, don't, oh, you first. I was going to say, you know, I doubt she's just going to build nothing but tenacity or not. She needs other stats in order to be effective, so well, I don't think we're going to be seeing that. She doesn't need to build full tenacity. The entirety of it would be her going down the defensive tree, so instead of being 21-9 or anything of the variant, she would be 9-21 in any of the variant. And then Merc Treads, granted, may not be as smart of a, as smart of a buy against a Gangplank due to his very low magic damage, but... The boots themselves aren't too expensive, and then Zephyr, of course, would be a decent item on Aurelia that she could put into her core build if need be. Instead of the boots, that is. And then the Elixir would just be something to buy at some point. And in total, it would be about 1,600 gold worth of invest on top of her passive and the Masteries. Very cheap and very effective ways of just saying, screw all of you. (laughs) (laughs) Indeed. Everyone complaining about that Morgana three-second binding. Play Aurelia and just become overpoweredly broken. Yeah, Never get CC left again. But anyway, we are in the loading screen right now. We have three skins on the side of Bilgewater and so far four skins on the side of Ionia, which means Team Four skin getting the upper hand. We have Midnight Ari, Nightblade Aurelia, Pool Party Lee Sin, and Arcade Sona versus Astro Nautilus, Magnificent Twisted Fate, and Arcade Misfortune. Though I will give props towards the Magnificent TF skin, since that is a legendary legacy skin. Yeah, that is... Yeah, that, all the skins are pretty good ones, so... Uh, I will say just because of the 4 versus 3, yeah, Ionia takes the skin war. And as we all know, the skin war is actually more important than the tournament itself, so... Yes, in fact, all the players are going to leave the game once it fully loads in and just hand over the cup towards Ionia. If only. (laughs) Now, let's see. We're going to be seeing Misfortune and Nami as Buildwar's bot lane. And, you know, most of the time, like, you know, Misfortune isn't, you know, She's not super uncommon. She's used enough, but the most popular you see for Build Wars does seem to be Graves. And that is... Uh, so, I think part of the reason is Graves is stronger in lane versus Misfortune has more of a team fight uh, power thanks for ultimate. Well, that can, well, be, that can be, be a little different with Nami due to the fact that Misfortune's double up will proc the unhit effect from Nami's Tide Color Blessing. Added a little bit of damage, and that is something. With Sona versus and Sona and Varus, though, it's a bit of healing that they do want to try to get rid of. Varus having his own heal and then life steal with Sona's heal herself. Something to know here: Mister Sapling choosing to go with Ignite instead of Exhaust. There are no heavy assassins to worry about on the side of Bilgewater, so I can understand it. But it would be something to worry about, just as a we don't have any way to reduce the damage this game plank is doing. Yeah. Gangplank, uh, you know, if you can cut down his damage and attack speed, that helps a lot because he is definitely a very heavy force in terms of DPS. And Dark oh. Omega on him just makes it all the more terrifying. We are in the we spectator's leg right now. We shall see the first champion slash summoner combo to buy their item. 
after a while. Maybe. This is certainly taking longer than usual. I'm going to have to break out a deck of cards soon. Ah, the game has officially started. First person to buy an item shall be the champion summoner combo of Misfortune and Soda Man buying a Doran Blade. Yep. I will say, though, uh, just notice, Buildwater went ahead and their lineup yeah, is actually... Their lineup is actually uh, already pre-lined up for us when you match up the top, jungle, mid, ADC, and support. They already <laughs> put it in order, so... Yeah, that's How like very clever of those are. Well, apparently Ionia's bans have affected Bilgewater. The support Anamorph slash Nami has been stricken dead at his computer. Or maybe just the hamster powering it. So we shall have a momentary lapse of play as we are trying to reconnect the summoner. I... Since it is within you know, the first minute, obviously they could choose for a remake to deal with the uh, summoner that has connection issues, but I just checked uh, in my client, and the players are still all in game, so that is good news. It seems as they're not going to be remaking. You're looking into the future? That is madness! <laughs> of course, that's just my superpower. Mm-hmm. Just reading the chat for a bit in the in-game. I don't read Twitch chat. I don't remember to pull it up. <laughs> a summoner has oh, and that is Animorph reconnecting. Dark is booping, everyone. Notice the time stands, everybody. Animorph is reconnected at 16 seconds, yet everybody's talking at 17 seconds. What? My God. It is mind-blowing. Game has started back up. Nami is buying her items and leaving the base. Everybody forgetting to tip the merchant. Both merchants, in fact, are going home penniless due to the fact that the items they sell are 100% value of the items or the amount of money they spent to buy them. So sad. But the merchants do, at the end, get keep all the excess unspent gold. <laughs> oh God! How often that happens. This is why everybody wants to make sure they can buy all the items they can. Up oh, and Soda Man placing a ward over the wall in the bot lane. And just a little bit of friendly taunting. Nope, Nami's not doing friendly taunting, that's just annoying. I love doing that on the Bars over the wall. Oh, basic take up from Soda, first damage. GG. Nothing to report right now. I'm gonna see if George is here. Nope. Oh, yes, George the Suicidal Frog is there standing in red base. For those that don't know the joke, there's a frog on the bot lane red side that when you get too close to it, it jumps off the edge of the map. It's so and then plummets to its death. It's so cute. And there's a snail. They're so cute right next to Nami. Look at a little snail. 20 seconds till minion, er, well, till technically minions get to their towers. And then the monsters and yada yada. Nautilus opting to go for the gromp as normal, while Lee Sin will shall be doing blue buff. Yep, the, there's really a lot of just trial strategies. Oh, well, he's switching to ground. But you know, there's a lot of different you know strategies going on how you want to start off your jungle now. As you know, back in you know the old jungle, it was obvious, okay, you start one of your buffs, and then you just clear the other buff, and you get a camp. That way you level three and you start ganking. But now, because they do so much more damage, and you don't have the five pots to heal up, you start to from paths to try to sustain through your jungle longer. Lee Sin deciding to start his wolves level 2, and in fact, not even going for blue buff, heading right towards red buff, his smite shall be up soon. And for those that don't know, back in season 2 and 1, I believe, and even, I think beginning of season 3 before they did the changes, the buffs actually spawned about 10 seconds later than the actual minions themselves, so you used to have to leash the wolves and the buff for your jungler. A wolf slash rave camp, but yes. Yeah, you could just be possible, and the jungler would get more farm early on, but they decided to change because laners, especially in the bot lane, would go for the golems before Mina show up and get the early level two, punish their lane opponents out. 
Lee Sin coming towards mid lane, does have red buff. Twisted Fate pushed up quite a bit. Ari is not in position to help him. Heavy using Ghost. No Q up from Lee Sin. And we have Summoner spell down for Twisted Fate. Aurelia going on Gangplank in the top lane. Heal to break the stun. Ignite coming out from Gangplank. Flash from Aurelia with in Q range. And yes, that is first blood for wow. Dark Omega. That is a very bad start. That was their high tier, their platinum. Going off to against Hillwater's is in the bot lane. Spotted by a ward. Oh, nope, he's running Actually, away. I just um, wanted to make sure I reported that. I think uh, GP was silver last season, but close enough. <laughs> he's he's considered bronze now, and we like to poke fun that he is. <laughs> yeah, so the bronze took on the plat. Never say that rank de determines everything. Mm -hmm. Yep, we're gonna have to tell GG Palis that he's got a new shiny bronze. His shiny bronze deputy. Oh. Yep, and there's a D or a AFK po a pause words coming out from Ionia. They do still have their full five minutes of pause time. Well, now not full five minutes. Uh, now they're saying Revo died partially because of lag. Gangplank booping Aurelia over and over again, ten, get, I guess, got to her. <laughs> oh my god. What have I done in the dark? I think it's just an entire online cult you've created now, Porkchop. Oh god. The cult of booping. The cult of booping. Notice, four minutes now, and Leeson has not even attempted his blue buff yet. He is running into the Nautilus jungle. Nope, coming around for Twisted Fate. TF and Ari are both at half health. Blue card just pulled from TF. Flash still available. Flash is over the wall. Point blank missing Q. Or, you yeah, what I meant. But ultimately, we say his Q is, is not really the big point of gank. He burnt the second summoner spell on TF. So he ganked twice, both times burnt summoner spell. That is a good job by him. Now, TF needs to play much more defensively, and that should give Ari the ability to take the lead in CS. Won't be too hard for Twisted Fate being pushed back into his tower. He may have the blue card to help sustain himself, but he'll be limited on other spells he can do. Well, compared to the other spell he can do. Now it's in the bot lane right now, not spotted by any wards. Now it's Rocky's head flashes in front of the mini wave, poking the Vars, able to basic attack and pull the flash. Double up from his fortune and another basic attack securing the kill. Nautilus tower diving a little too far. He will not die to the tower, but and will survive. That is a kill from his fortune thanks to the tower diving skills of Nautilus on Raw. Now, what were you saying in the top lane? Sorry. Oh, in the top lane, it was. Gangplank was in the bush recalling. Aurelia put a war down, saw him, and jumped in at the last second. But Gangplank still managed to recall us within that like half second period where no matter what you're going to recall. Ah uh, yes. Gangplank does have his sheen. So that will be a lot more damage coming up from Dark Omega. And that's also more mana for him to sustain with, as that's one of his limitations is, you know, his mana, because he's relying a lot on his Q for that harass. And so yeah, he's just gonna be able to dish out so much damage on this Aurelia. If she's already died once, she is not gonna have a fun time. No, she's not as level six for Gangplank. Something to note as we keep praising certain summoners for their ability to play champions so well. Even though Gangplank is notorious for having mana problems, we've seen Dark Omega use his Q for about 90% harass the most of his games and never having to worry about mana. Even. Even though he does have the Crystalline Flask, that doesn't do too much in terms of long lanes sustainability. So he's using the heal to break out of the Relia stun and just trading back more damage than Relia can handle. Yeah, most of the time you see a Gangplank, he'll use his Q to farm for the extra gold, and then it uh, only costs half the normal mana amount when he does that. He doesn't have, he doesn't do that, and he's, it works out very well for him. It, Real quick, Lee Sin is coming top lane. Aurelia does not have enough health to try and fight the Sheen wielding Gangplank. In fact, Flash from Dark Omega in an attempt to kill her off, but his greed might actually pay off. Nope. No more minion basic attacks. Oh, Dark Omega. Not Dark Omega. Down in bot lane is what I was going to say. Double kill from Twisted Fate using his ultimate to come down bot lane. That was Ghost used to make sure he can secure the kill under the tower. 
Now there are no wards in the yeah, top lane. Those are going for drags. Stop with playing Hulk out for Nautilus, locking her down. The charm things. being used. Nautilus is not six, using his chilling smite. Are using her ultimate to dash away from Raw. That will be a lot of damage put on her. Lee Sin is level six, does have his smite up and ready. He will out damage Nautilus in terms of smite power. Uh, the dragon is warded. Oh, Gangplank using his ultimate very strategically on top of Ari and Lee Sin, bringing Ari down to 300 health. TF landing his wild card out. Hook onto the Lee Sin, stun card onto Lee Sin as well from the Twisted Fate. Unfortunately, Varus takes out Nami in the back. Ignite onto Raw. Aurelia landing a nice ultimate chain, hitting the Nautilus at very low health, and Ari flashes over the dragon as it's resetting. Ultimate for Misfortune not hitting any of the vital targets. So that was a uh, good job by Ari. Uh, they stopped the dragon and came out ahead and kills. Lee Sin, he uh, flashed in because they didn't have any vision on the dragon. He flashed in, queued it, hoping for the hit the second Q and then smite steal it. But it was too high. I Bilge War decided to chase him, which did kill him off. But then when the rest of Ionia came in, uh, they Bilge War couldn't handle being outnumbered. Main trouble there was Raw did not have enough health through that ignite in order to live through a, a an Aurelia ultimate. Words. Uh, something to note real quick. Leeson has not gone for his blue buff at all. Very interesting strategy. Though he understandable. Definitely need blue, but at the same time, it's free experience. The cooldown reduction does help. Ward spotting out Lee Sin in the top lane. Dark Omega ready for the gang. Dodge the Lee Sin Q. S slow coming out, not the stun. Uses his heal to try and save himself. Light Fixer using his ultimate as well, and this will be a flash from Aurelia to help secure the kill, but the Light Fixer, Lee Sin, basic attack shall kill him off. Yep, that's a little greed by Aurelia there. She's like, no, you're not getting this kill, Lee Sin. I want it. Oh, mid lane right now, it doesn't pay going hard onto Ari, having to ult away. Anchor barely missing her as she uses her first use of her ultimate. Oh, Nami down the bot lane, using her tidal wave to help secure the kill onto Sona as Misfortune dealing a lot of damage to the exhausted Junpei on the Vodis. The Bilgewater is two kills ahead, including their first blood kill, and that's given them 2,000 gold lead, which isn't much, but early on it's actually a fair amount. They also, in general, are uh, beating their lane opponents in farm, and so that's contributing to it. They seem yeah. to be catching... Uh, what are they doing? I think they're going for blue buff. Lee Sin does have it warded. It is only a 2,000 health blue buff versus the 2,500 health blue buff of that of a second killed one. Misfortune often just go for Scuttle Crab to give a little bit extra dragon control. Lee Sin will not be able to take it. It is in fact caught up by a ward. A very large amount of damage to going onto them. They should now suspect a ward is placed a blue buff for that from that jump he did. Now, they are being forced away, Nautilus and Twisted Fate, both in the mid lane. Q lane from Lee Sin, E from, his, uh, e from Nami on Misfortune, just a little bit extra damage. Varus flanking them from the side, dodging the charm. Point blank Varus ultimate, unfortunately not able to chain to Nami. TF and Gangplank ultimate coming in, stun from Sona, laughing down Soda. Still able to kill off Lee Sin, double up, able to kill off Varus as well. Ari jumping into the back line, Nautilus ultimate, in fact, catching her up. That is a stun card to finish off Ari. Now Sona is caught between four members of Bilgewater. Something. Oh, Flash coming out from the bush, able to dodge out. Very well played by Mr. Sapling. Something to note there Ari was using her ultimate to juke around in the back side of that fight. She jumped into the oncoming Nautilus ultimate versus over the wall, so it pretty much just shortened her lifespan. So but now it, it. Key part of that fight there was Ionia. They did have the uh, numbers advantage for a while, but they didn't engage. Instead, they waited and tried to do this weird flank with Varus. And while because they waited, it let Nautilus and TF get close enough to be able to join that fight. Dragon secure for Bilgeroy. It was a decent enough flank. The problem was the CC lock wasn't actually that strong. Sona's ultimate only hitting Soda Man, who was very low still, but not focused due to the Gangplank ultimate Twisted Fate breaking up the fight. And before that, it was Varus's ultimate landing on just Soda Man instead of locking up Nami and Soda. So once Misfortune was broken free from that ultimate, she did get caught up by Sona. But by then, it was already Gangplank and Twisted Fate landing, or er, aiding into the fight.
I tried to make big words sound smart. Yada yada. Sm stun car coming up from Twisted Fate, landing onto Ari. Nautilus using his passive to help secure to help lock down the Ari. I need to stop using secure the kill. And Twisted Fate getting another kill. Five, zero, and one on the Lich Bane rush Twisted Fate, which I approve. Yeah. Uh, Ari got him pretty low. Ignite him, hoping that after the CC energy, he'll get one last ability off and finish Twisted Fate off, making the trade one for one. But was just slightly too low on health and wasn't able to get anything off. But is the problem with a Lich Bane Rush Twisted Fate? They do a lot of damage with that stun card, and it may not be too much of an ability power rush. Oh, Nami being fought after by Twisted. Er Nami fighting off Lee Sin, heal barely able to keep her alive. Flash from Lee Sin jumping right into the start of the tidal wave. Stun card, or er, stun card, stun bubble from Nami, keeping him locked down. Smite from Raw on Nautilus. Lee Sin trying to at least get the kill on Nami, but a point blank ultimate from the Nautilus shall make sure that Nami survives. And Nami takes the kill with a basic attack. Very well done save by Nautilus, using his giant frame to block any skill shot possible that would have killed off Nami. I believe that was exhaust used by Nami, along with her flash. But Nautilus Set. looking now to try gank bot lane, but they're playing very far back. They know Nautilus was nearby because he was there for the Lee Sin kill, so they're staying back. Indeed, Nautilus taking out the South Scuttle Crab instead. Though he will be noticed by a ward, but it won't do too much except know that the Scuttle Crab is dead. And now he's just going to scuttle along down to the Dragon Pit. Ari, very low, under on tower, forced to recall. That's going to give Twisted Fate plenty of time uh, to get a bunch of free fortune, farms. Fortune. Using her ultimate to get the kill, sorry. No problem. Yes, that was the gameplay traveling down mid lane, giving Aurelia a bit of free farm. She should be a little bit more experienced than the gangplank. They both have one kill, though Gangplank has two more assists, and actually those assists giving him the experience that he's been missing in lane to come out level 10 versus her level 9. Neither of them have too much of their build. Oh, first tower taken. We have Gangplank with Sheen, Zeal, and Avers Blade, versus Aurelia's Avers Blade with Phage and a Chain Vest, trying to block as much damage as she can from those parlays, but ultimately not doing much since he does have crit damage in his room page. Now, this is a very, well, I only a lot of times you're used to them having the better late game team comp because they have Mastery and Akali on their team. But in this game, they don't have either of those. And so, they're, I really just got pretty good, you know, mid to late game power spike. But the rest of the IO team does not. Oh, and the mid lane. TF ults, flashes, Vars will card. Be able to be Oh, will he? Vars does land a point, or not point, like a very far arrow to poke into Misfortune, and unfortunately, yeah. Gangplank Ultimate will not save her. Ghost coming from Twisted Fate, landing a point blank blue card, actually. Basic attacks with Nami's Tide Power Blessing coming out onto Vars, who does survive. Nice kick by Lee Sin. Vara is just barely... Oh, Hulk landing onto the onto. wall, trying to chase down the Vars, but Twisted Fate having to jump under tower. Red card coming out to try to force Light Fixture off, and it in fact does. Vars running away, hoping to be executed by minions, but the hook from Nautilus does reduce its cooldown by 50% if he hits terrain with it. Smite coming out as well, making sure that Vars does not run away. Nami getting credit with the Tycho's Blessing. Gameplay able to push top down now that Aurelia has been forced back. Her teleport has been used to go down to bot lane. Well, this was used a little bit ago, but either way, she's bot lane now. Gameplay with Sheen should be able to take the tower quite easily. Ignoring the pain he's taking in the face. And in fact, now realizes the pain he's taking in the face and having to flash out. One more basic attack would have killed off the tower. It was left with 54 health. Gangplank has 116 attack damage to this. Gangplank just decided to be okay with using that one defensive summoner spell and will let the minions take out the tower in their own time. Now that does seem Triforce to... completed, force completed. I think, yeah, he, it's obvious the minions weren't going to take it. I'm assuming he just wants it to stay up for a little bit longer. So you can farm top lane for just a little bit more, and then he'll be able to finish off the tower anytime he wants to. It'll be at his leisure. That is understandable, but 50 health is not something that you'd want to leave a tower if you want to just keep farming up the minions. Around 300 to 500 health is the 
right amount of health you want to leave it at if you plan on either farming the champion or the minions, just in general during the laning phase, due to the fact 50 health is pretty much a cannon basic attack. Though 500 will still be a lot of damage for minions to do. Aurelia has not gotten any other items since she'd recently left base. I don't recall if she actually started with a crystalline flask, though probably. Stun coming out from Stun coming out from Aurelia onto Gangplank, who immediately heals to uh, break it. We see a scuffle down to the bot lane. Gangplank using his ultimate onto the Varus, Sona, and Lee Sin. Misfortune landing all of her bullets. And that is a long range double up, making sure that Misfortune gets the kill on Sona. Lee Sin also falling. The Varus ultimate unable to lock down Misfortune fast enough. And that shall be the mid tower taken by Twisted Fate as well. And they're setting up for their second dragon of the game. Looking at the builds right now, this is 18 and a half minutes in. Triforce with Average Blade built on Gangplank. Phage, Average Blade, and Chainvest still on the side of Ionia. Or not Aurelia, Ionia, Aurelia. Very similar names. Stalker's Blade with a Juggernaut enchant, along with Mobility Boots and a Giant's Belt for Nautilus. TFL have... gets the stun. Ari gets over the wall thanks for dash and seems to be safe. They are chasing, however, that is Bilgewater going up towards the top lane. That will be all five of the Bilgewater champions in the top lane right now. Ari deciding to leave right under Tower Lee Sin and Aurelia are going to be in the middle of a giant close cloud. Or Gangplank's just going to get a three or kill Aurelia off before the title hits. One of the two. Yeah, Lee Sin he didn't is left even alone. need the rest of his team. He was just so much stronger than that Aurelia. He doesn't need anyone to help him. While he does not need his team to kill off the Aurelia, a Lich Bane and Power Twisted Fate will help take down the, inhib the inner tower within a matter of seconds. Uh, continuing with the rest of the builds, we have Trailblazer with Warrior Enchant for Lee Sin along with Pair of Boots No Magic. Ari has a DFG and a Pair of Boots. TF has Lich Bane, Nidalee Slayer, Draw Sorcerer Shoes. Misfortune has her Infinity Edge with Berserker Grease toward, or versus Varus. Is, huh. Building a Brutalizer, a little bit extra cooldown reduction, doesn't hurt. Uh, BF Sword and Berserker Greaves. Lastly, we have the supports, both with 2CS. We have Shadows of Harmony, Frost Fang, Sightstone, Mobility Boots, Forbidden Idol, and Amplifying Tome on the side of Nami, oop, which have just been built into Mikhail's Crucible. And then on Sona, who's 0, 5, and 1, we have Chalice of Harmony, Sightstone, Forbidden Idol, and. Uh, I forget the name of it, but right now we have a fight coming out. Misfortune versus Lee Sin. Charm from Ari, along with a Q from Lee Sin, securing the kill. Ari able to take it, however. Ultimate from Gangplank, trying to lock down as much of Ionia as possible. Flash from Nautilus, able to save himself as Sona barely misses the ultimate onto Twisted Fate. U Ion er, Aurelia using her ultimate, flashing just short of Twisted Fate. Nautilus using his passive to make sure that Twisted Fate survives. Gangplank and Nautilus taking the kills that were left over. And that was an amazing catch by Ionia, turned into a bloodbath. The problem was they overextended. They got the pick, but then they just got this stressed out chase, and Bilgewater was able to quickly regroup and were able to just kind of pick them off one at a time. And that was Frostbang that I was trying to remember the name of. They Bilgewater takes the second inner tower to nearly 50% health before Ari is able to show up. It was a great catch they had on Misfortune, very strong, but then when they couldn't secure Twisted Fate after all the flashes and the cues, they were just caught up by the Nautilus who reprocked his shield, which, for those that do not know the ratios, it's 15% of his mac, or I think his bonus health, if I remember correctly. Yes, of his bonus health plus 300 base at this point at rank 5, so it's a very beefy shield to get through, especially since Ra has finished his Sunfire Cape. So, since they weren't able to get past that, Gangplank was able to walk right into the front line. Basic attack in Q to help make sure that Aurelia and Leeson died off. Had a bit of a slow on Twisted Fate to make sure Ari survives. That red buff coming in very handy. 22-7 to 7 in kills right now. Twisted Fate using his ultimate. That might have just been for reconnaissance. So, he, they all... Bilgewater knows that all four of Ionia's members beside... Her, oh no, he actually used it to go to top lane. Ah, I just noticed that. But yes, it's a 4v4 in mid lane now with Twisted Fate versus Aurelia right in the top lane. Yeah, this is a uh, 13,000 gold lead for Bilgewater. That is getting and to the point of insurmountability. Oh! Lisa that taking out immediately, Nomulu getting down the Varus. Double up, taking the kill on Sona and Infect. Wow, I believe that was Red Buff that actually got the kill on Ari. In the middle of the gangplank ultimate, that's a quadra kill for Misfortune. Will she be able to secure the pentakill? That is. Oh! 
Scumbag Nobby. Animorph. Oh, uh, Nobby, not gain. Uh, she she's not gonna helping herself out with the faction leadership poll coming up. KST a pentakill like that is not the way to go. It was so scumbag. This is the second time that Animorph has stolen a pentakill, if I remember correctly, in a featured match. Twisted Fate double tower dive in to make sure that he can kill. Dominating. Yeah, but so it was looking like we're gonna have our third pentakill of the tournament, but nope. Animorph shuts that down. Nami's whole numbers for the leadership just dropped about 50 points. Because that's what happens when you KS a pentakill. Now, Dragon is going to be up in a minute. Bilgewater, they're just taking the crab out now, so they don't have to worry about Ionia stealing it. Although, I don't think Ionia, even if the crab wasn't there, would. I don't think they really have much of the opportunity to steal it. No, they catch out Nautilus, though, on Raw. Nami shows up, her bubble misses everyone, but TF's there, ulted by Sona, gold card, flash, Nami tidal wave, there goes Twisted Fate, ults out, but Gangplank and Raw are there, but, I don't know, doesn't even need that, Misfortune ult, and Lee Sin is, he has to run away, he was, he was separated from his team a little bit, which allowed him to live, but now he just needs to get back to base and heal up, because Bilgewater is going to be pushing it soon. Really, it was the whole time trying to do some slip pushing, but now realizes she doesn't have the opportunity to do that. Her team's dying too quickly without her. Nautilus and Nami. Yep, they get the. They're going for Dragon. The Iron is not around to stop it. But... Now that Gang of like Misfortune have showed up, that's actually going to die. But I am <laughs> hearing <laughs> chanting outside of the casting box. It is a bunch of summoners all over the factions today, chanting for the death of Nami after stealing yet another pentakill from her teammates, burning effigies of her in the street. Actually, burning copies of the Little Mermaid as well. Twist of Fate alts. He's going to pick off Varus. The rest of the team can... manages to get Ari. Uh, uh, now they're looking to... Lee Sin kicking towards the tower, not into the range, and actually to... Let's see here. Look, I want to... Yeah, so I'm questioning Lee Sin's item choice for the jungle, because he went for the AD jungle item. Oh, he goes in and instantly dies! But yeah, I'm questioning Lee Sin because they definitely need someone who can survive all this damage. And he went for the damage jungle item. Misfortune ulting, hoping to finish off Aurelia, but Aurelia was already out of range. Meanwhile, Varus and Arya are trying to stop Supermans from killing their Nexus Towers, which gives Nautilus and Gangplank the ability to take a free inhibitor. Misfortune looking to do the same in the bot lane. Hook barely missing R as you just out of range. Oh, there goes Aurelia. And this could easily be game. Ra is taking the towers, and he just doesn't care. They do nothing to him. Yeah, this Varus is the only one up, and he, he if. One Q takes him down to 25% health. Gameplay, he runs in. Now, Bildwar is just derping and wants to see if they can fountain dive. Misfortune. Oh, she somehow manages to dodge the least sin Q. Dodges the... Oh, nope. She almost gets him, but Lee Sin finally just pulls out that high damage ult and finishes her off. Bilgewater just decides to drag this out a little bit longer. What's well, a better yeah. way to commit overkill than a kick in the jaw? Yeah. And, you know, 
I know, yeah, they, all five of them have to commit to just killing these supermans. They have three dead inhibitors. They can't go anywhere but inside their own base and try to kill off all of these super minions. Now me placing a ward and scanning over at Baron using her Tycar Blessing in an attempt to kill off the crab before it hits the 50 minute mark. But there's really no point in going for a Baron. They can end this game any I mean, time they want. Reasons. Overkill. But, I mean, do you really care about damage inflicted to monsters? No, you, you care about kills and how fast you win the game. Well, granted, the Baron buff would just be something of a big screw over. Gangplank using his ultimate directly onto the Nexus. Twisted Fate one shotting Ari with a Lich Bane red card. Vars ultimate landing on Twisted Fate basic attack to secure the kill. Raw also locked up. Not no, no, using his ultimate point blank onto Sona in the fountain. Gangplank jumping in there. Dying to the Sona, in fact. Oh, oh Soda Man <laughs> flashing to get a kill. <laughs> that was a 30 yeah. kill lead drop down to a 28 kill lead. Buildwater was just uh, kind of dripping at the end there. They could have ended a lot sooner, and they're like, we'll let Miz finish you off. We're going to try well, not, and well, get free kills. I wouldn't say derping. Derping would have been a complete and utter throw if there were no towers left on the side of Buildwater, but that was more of a. Yellow. Secured win. They knew that they were not going to lose. So they so decided to, you know what, screw it. We'll just do whatever we want. No, yeah, in fact, Nami, Nami built two Mikhail's Crucibles. Wow. Yeah, what? they were just really <laughs> a, a YOLO game right there. But, so that is game one. Buildwater taking a very commanding lead. And now Ionia has to not lose two more games. If they lose two more games, it's all over for Ionia. It was a devastating loss just in terms of actually gold as well. The lowest amount of gold was on the Nautilus at 9.3k, which is still a thousand gold more than the Aurelia, or 1,000.3, 1,300 more gold than Aurelia, but only 300 more gold than the Varus, who really only got fed at the end of the game, picking up a lot of those fountain gills. Well, either way, Mike, who is your... MVP of the game today? Um, well, it's pretty difficult. I mean, both teams, it was like Buildwire was just so dominant uh, overall that like it felt everyone was doing good, other than the Nami who KS the Pentakill. Yes, Scumbag yes, Nami. Nami. So, Actually, instead of an MVP for Buildwater who all did fantastic, we shall give... Oh, no, I'm not going to be that mean. I'm not going <laughs> to be that guy. Were you going to give a WVP? No, I was going to give an LVP, but I don't want to do that to Animorph. He does an amazing Nami. It wasn't his fault that he wanted... Actually, it kind of is his fault for hitting the button. But at the same time, everybody's stolen a pentakill once in their life, I admit it. We shan't slander him for too long. All right, Mike. Pretty much just the rest of the day. Are you set? And then, looking at the enemy team, it was like, no one really stood out that much either. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and say Lee Sin because he stood out a little bit more than the rest of the team, although I only have, in general, just did not look well. Um, I can agree with you there, Mike. up the next game? Yep, I am working on it now. Okey -dokey, I will I'm going to end the stream now and get ready for the second game. Can I do my outro? Okay. Yay. Well, everybody, that's been the first game of the tournament. It has ended promptly, early, actually, about 15 minutes. We shall see you soon. Till then. Outro. Now silence.